Cool. All right. That would be the house. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, basically, just tell me if you have any questions. Most of these are pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, to begin with, um, I'm not sure if these folks get it or people can hold them. Um, they put in this door right here with the glass in it, which uh, anybody doesn't have to be a home inspector knows it's not a fire door. It's not a glass and fire door. Yeah. So, right there, the $300 door is shut. That's the problem. Garbage can. Can you can pick it up? Yeah, if that's from the garage into the house, if there's a fire in the garage, that has to be a solid core 20 minute fire in the door. And, you know, they're a solid core. And it's also supposed to, everybody disconnects them. It's supposed to have one of those hinges with a spring on it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of odd though, that wouldn't have been picked Reason up. being is because you have a fire in your garage <coughs> and, the, and the fire marshal comes out after the fact, they finally didn't have the fire door there, and the fire went from the garage to here. They can null and void your insurance. Your fire insurance. Uh, they don't have to, they don't have to rebuild cool. the house again. I didn't know that I should do that myself. I yeah, so that's part of the things we can ask fire bills. Okay. Okay. Uh, this thing I'm not too sure about is over in the uh, I'm going to call the appraiser, appraiser and ask her if she missed that so she can yeah, put it on the appraiser and then give it to the seller. So a little more oomph to the yeah. Uh, yeah, asking. I agree. Um, okay, this is over on the east side of the garage. Okay. See how this used to come all the way across? Well, there was no wall. That would just be a carport. Okay. So they put the outside walls up to make it a garage now. Um, they cut this, went across, they built the wall on top of the existing slab. Mm -hmm. I've got a picture here in the middle. I'm just not too sure about drainage, if they did a French drain in that rock, because actually the water's been seeping under the wall and soaking up the plywood that they put on that outside mm -hmm. wall. So they didn't seal the floor real good or put some caulking or, or something mm -hmm. on that bottom plate before they put the studs up. They didn't seal it real good. Mm -hmm. If they sealed it at all, they may not have. So when water hits this part of the slab, because this used to be the floor of the slab all the way to this side for the carport. Well, they just put a wall on top. Mm -hmm. That's all they did. They just set it on there and mm -hmm. didn't want to have anything. So, yeah. Um, this looks like it's old. I got a water stain just outside the front door underneath that patio cover. Um, I know the pest and termite guy, we both looked at it, and they've resealed and redone the roof. So I have a feeling this was an old leak. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's not anymore. It's hard as a rock right now. He couldn't find any softness in it, so I think it's all taken care of. Okay, next we've got is in the electrical panel. <laughs> I've got these two 50 amp breakers. As you can see, I don't know, basically it, it's required to have, if it's a 50 amp, it's two wires. There's a cook across it. It's, it's a 220 breaker. Well, they've only got one wire hooked up to a single 50 amp, which is major code value. You can't do that. The problem is it's not labeled. Nobody took a belt pin and wrote next to the breaker what it goes to. So I don't even know what it, if it needs to be 50 or it only needs to be 15. Not sure. So that's going to take an electrician to farm that one out to figure out what the heck they did. Next, um, the guy ran the wiring for what was the spa right here mm -hmm. on the concrete patio. You see the, the car yeah. do it out there with the wires mm -hmm. all ready to go for it if you want to. Nice yeah. disconnect box on the wall, actually. Yeah. Well, when he hooked it up, this is the white neutral wire, and the code just says you're never allowed to put two white neutrals under the same screw. Mm -hmm. So, oddly enough, a little ways further up, <clears throat> and this is a big wire, so I can see why they couldn't quite stuff it into that little hole. Yeah. But a little further up, there's a couple more larger holes that could be put on. So it's basically just loosen that up, take it out, and okay. put it back. Or we're not going to use it, so right, we wouldn't so, have to worry about that. You really would. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you're not going to use it, yeah. that would be the only problem. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is pretty simple, but it does take an electrician to find it. Um, this is a 50 amp 220 breaker for the down inside of the panel that has to have what's called a handle tie. It's a little metal square thing that slides on the back, bottom handle. Mm -hmm. It has a little tab that sticks up and it goes into that upper slit. So if one of these handles starts to trip, it pulls the other one with it. Yeah. They're both supposed to trip. Um, that's missing. Unfortunately, Home Depot, Lowe's do not carry the handle tie. Yes. It's mm -hmm. like 35 cents. Only electrical wholesale houses stock them. Mm -hmm. So you're both in the electrical place. Those well in the it's something we should get an electrician on here to fix all this. It stuff. sounds like there's enough there to hand to an electrician mm -hmm. and say, here's a couple hours worth of work. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we should do. That would be yeah. the best that's idea. Take care of that. If you have not got all we have one. Uh, we don't have any other. One. If you have a good one. If not, we'll definitely get you the other. Yeah, I could give her a fair Where is the electrical box? Is it out in the garage? Yeah, it's on the side of the house over there in the back. Outside? Yeah. Okay. Here's kind of like a gate. Can anything cause a fire what they got going on over there? Oh, what? Anything cause an overheat and a fire? Those, not really. No. The only thing would be that 50 uh, that's hooked up to a single 50 amp. Oh, if that's yeah. supposed to be going to like a 15 or a 20, then sure, whatever yeah. it's going to, it's going to get to 20, 25, 30, and it's going to fry it before it ever trips it. Mm -hmm. 
So what, what, does that, what does that go? Yeah, we need yeah, that stream out here. Electricity kind of pouring out yeah. kind of what that kill tower okay. was. Yeah. yeah, they didn't write the You put in your report that don't know where it goes to? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we'll get, we'll get that. <laughs> then I've got the usual Saturday honeydew list of sprinklers. Um, a lot of the valves out there leaking in the backyard over there. Some of them, unfortunately, like one side of the valve always has pressure to it. The other side won't have pressure until it turns on. Well, unfortunately, I've got a couple that the side that always has pressure is always leaking. It's just running mm -hmm. down the sides of the pipe all mm -hmm. the time, so it's mushy over there. Mm -hmm. So I know that's going to be a little dumb stuff. Well, that's good to know, I think. Mean. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 good to know. <laughs> bring those up today. Yeah. All right, yeah. up on top of the roof, this would be something I would actually call smug about is um, these are the connections up at the top of the mast head for the electrical where it comes down from the power pole, mm -hmm. comes all the way down and up to it. Or when they connect together, they normally wrap them with this kind of special, it's not just regular electrical tape, but special black tape. Only because I wouldn't want to be a squirrel and have my front feet on that one mm -hmm. or my back feet on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah squirrels. <laughs> um, but anyway, so those should have been wrapped. And they may have been wrapped, and over the years, it's just deteriorated and come out in the sun. Uh, some other lots will come out free of charge, and they'll rewrap them for you. Okay. Because this is their connection. This is your wire on this side that goes up to the masthead to the electrical panel. Mm -hmm. This is theirs on that side right here. Yeah. So I'm just going to buy some masks and come out. Um, okay, this is only a, <clears throat> not terrible yet, but right around where the tire line is at the pool, goes up to the concrete deck. This is called a black wheat screen. And what that does is prevents the water from going in under the deck and behind the tiles. Mm -hmm. It starts popping tiles off. <coughs> the, this piece that goes across here, a few areas that are starting to break and come loose. So you got to watch it. The original piece of black plastic is still there that's behind it. If this starts getting to be, this is actually right in the corner where he's standing. Mm -hmm. There's a little left of his equipment. <clears throat> so that just needs to be watched. <coughs> and it gets more than, I'll say, two feet long, and all of a sudden it starts really peeling off. It's five, six feet long. You need to have a guy come out and seal it. Because man, I don't want to see, see those titles when they come out. Once they come out, it's what's called the bead bond behind it will start going. Your jackhammer into a concrete deck. Well, so, is this something that should be fixed now before it gets to that point? Honestly, it, it should probably be looked at by somebody that does pools. Now, maybe this guy that does pools and stuff like that does not know the mechanical building of the pool. Mm -hmm. Well, he seems like he can somebody, do a lot. So, if he I'll does, talk to him. Yeah, he, yeah, he might know how to do the repair on that. He might go, uh, that's, no, that's actually screen, right. right. Yeah, that black plastic wheat screen at the top of the tile line. Right next to his blue box. Actually. You, you swept this place pretty good. Got everything. That's good. I got to look at every inch. I'm lining up for everything in the house. That's, that's good. good. <laughs> yeah, I got to make sure I see it. That's really but, good. Anyway, so that just needed, and I do notice anywhere else, some of the other areas of the, of the wheat screen going around, they're A plus. They're flawless. Yeah. So I don't know why just that end right there is starting to kind of come off. But it, it just normally they'll seal it. That pool's a pretty, you see that pool's only a couple years old, too. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the plaster, the plaster. Oh, okay. They replastered it, yeah. Um, okay, this, I'm sorry, you probably can't figure out what the heck that picture is. This is underneath the slide. This is the rubber tube that goes up, yeah. and you turn the water on over the little I did, I did that, you yeah. Did it? Okay. yeah. And of course, it's leaking like an absolute silk. I see, we've seen that when I turned it on. It just needs a whole new setup, the way it goes up mm -hmm. through, the, through the fiberglass of the slide. Okay, I can do that myself. You, no, sure can. Gonna, you can actually well, order that online. Oh. Yeah. You never know. If they say no to that, you can order that new piece online that that goes on to okay. for slides. Yeah. You don't have to buy the whole slide. Yeah. It's only a few bucks. Yeah, I turned it on. I was going to swarm. was like spraying all over right. okay. What the heck? You already saw it. That's, that's, <laughs> it's an easy fix, but I just yeah. want somebody later to go, why is this leaking so bad? Perfect. Um, oh, and this, the guy installed these funky kind of fans that yeah. had a chill. I told you about that. that. What, you know, and the reason that? why is you have no attic. I told you, honey. On top of this uh -huh. is a flat top roof. So right. on top of this is what I'm walking on when I'm checking the roof out. So they can't run the wiring through. Um, honestly, no they should have been done years ago before they did the, the uh, one by six um, shiplap on the top. They should have done a groove down the top yeah. of that four by 10. They run the electrical wiring in that, drill a hole all the way up through. That's how they do it. But you can't back do it then now. they didn't think about it because now you have to tear it all off. The whole roof? Yeah, all those, all the, uh, the six inch wide planks all have to come off, which would be the roof. Ugh. Can't do it now. So that's why they did the swag idea. Now, can we get longer? Can we get some like, longer things out here so you can kind of get, at least get this out of the way? Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, that's what we need the to thing do. I've got to call is you're not allowed to have the splices like the blue wire nuts. Yeah. You can't Stick it out. out. You can see it. You okay. Inside the camera. That'd be the so If someone will come fix that, so that would be an electrician. So you have to totally take all these planks out. 
to install those pathways. I Normally, yeah, that? on the top of the four inch wide, that's four by 10. On the top, they take a router, they router the top of it, and they lay the wire down in that groove. What do you say? they put the planks over there. Uh -huh. Huh? Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. So, anyway, um, yeah, normally they do that if they know there's going to be a ceiling fan mm -hmm. on a flat top. But in this case, in those days, they didn't really have lights. So, what they used to do, and see, so this is another problem. And then I've got it on my report. Yeah, this used stop. to be a switch. Because code requires when you walk into a room, you're supposed to turn on either a light and ceiling, mm -hmm. or one of the outlets has to be switched so you can put the lamp in. So when you put this on, boom, the lamp comes on. Unfortunately, you can see that there's a blank in here now. So that's just a code violation. When you walk into the room, you can't turn the light on. Okay. So the only way to do this would be you'd have to have a remote control to do it. That does not pass code. Um, Having a remote control, because if somebody leaves a remote control yeah. in another room, yeah. you walk in, you know, you're stuck. You can't turn the light on. So I don't know where this used to go. It used to go to one of these outlets, I guess. Is that what's moving? Is that what that, that switch is moving? Or no, there's no switches? There's no switches. There's no blanking now. Oh. It used to run an outlet. Yeah, that was kind of dumb how they did that. I can't believe that. I know. It's a little, little hokey. Is it something you can go back and fix, or would be too expensive? Well, the biggest thing is you can't have a wire that's showing. Um, the chain-wise, if you wanted a longer chain, yeah. yes, you can go so buy ground zip. That would cost that's a lot of money. Right? You'd have to pick all the beams down and stuff. Yeah, the only way to do it now would be to actually run conduit on the thing and all the way down the wall. So you're sightly looking at conduit. That's just, that's all, this is, well, just Which would be just as ugly, much like a chain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to see this house back in the, you know, 50s and 60s, they didn't put lights in the ceilings. They only switched to an outlet. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like that. Turn the bars and beautiful again. Huh? I drink the five pages. So no, um, like they okay. sell the ground power cord. It's actually called a zip line, mm -hmm. and it's made for man. It's just a yeah. cord, mm -hmm. and you, they make it you know, 100 feet long. You could put a brand new one on there. The problem is you may have to buy a little bit more of that brownish rustic kind of chain. So mm -hmm. if you wanted it to go all the way to the top and then just run down a sheet rock, yeah, it's too short. You'd have to go add about another two or three more feet of chain. You know, you could open up the chain a little bit and add more. You don't have to replace the whole thing. But you would have to replace the entire wire. Uh, the wire would have to be replaced through the chain. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so. I just had a fan there, but it seemed to be a better way to do it than what they did. Yeah. 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 So, if, but the, reason, the biggest thing that I'm calling is the fact you can't have a kind of wire in that situation. Yeah. Hanging out like that. Yeah. Now, the other thing I've got that um, well, is a little bit of an issue. They we stuck over the whole front of the house. Okay. So on the front of the house, okay. about well, maybe six feet or so, you know, used to see one of those rectangle bent screens for the foundation. Mm -hmm. Now you see on raised foundation, you know, the screen is about six feet or so. Well, this is what I've got. But what they did was they took the plywood right over the top of them, covered them all up, all the way across the front of the house, so we don't have any cross beam ventilation. Mm -hmm. Now, oddly enough, because you you got a great drainage in the backyard. You don't have water coming off the hill going into the house that you need to cross ventilation to drive it out down there. It's bone dry in the house. Cool. But I'm just saying because I know later, if um, if say you were to sell this house in 10 years, mm -hmm. that will guaranteed show up. Because when the house was built, um, Title 24 required a certain amount of ventilation in the sub area. So they add up how many square feet there is down there, and they figure out how many screens are required to vent the sub area. They add it up, it comes out to 26 vents. Okay, great. Well, it's great. It's got 13 to 15 around the side. The other 12 used to be across the front. Mm -hmm. They're not there anymore, so it doesn't pass down the point forward. But it could crop up later when you go to sell it. But since it's so dry down there, I'm not too worried about it as far as having to flow through air. But I'm supposed to let you know it's you know, not quite up there. Uh, under our living room, actually, I almost got quite scared. Uh, right about there in that carpet, is uh, a, there was a box down there. This wire is still hot. This is actually mounted to the bottom of the subfloor. Oh, it's up, it's underneath there. It's underneath on the subfloor when you crawl. No, no, it's underneath. Oh, why don't you grab this card real quick there? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, it should have had just one of these kind of octagon kind of shape. A couple of those. Mm -hmm. Another electrical, electrical thing. thing. That's all it is. Another electrical thing. So we should um, have the only way to get to it, there's an access in this entry closet to go yeah. under, and there's an access back in the back bedroom closet also. Okay. Unfortunately, you kind of drew a line about right across here. This is as far as you can go from this one. Okay. So you can't get under that. You'd have to go in through that closet up okay. here. Um, they ran heat and air conditioning ducts under the house, which blocks everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So if you go there, you can get this area, the master and everything. Okay. And here there's a duct, there's a forward to the house. So you have to go into that one and come back over here. Okay. Um, but anyway, you can get to that one from that room, and what is it, two dollar cover plate. So I know. Um, but anyway, yeah, that wire, that black wire. What's it going is to? What's that? Why is that? Okay. It's a dead end. They abandoned it down here. Well, what's it for? Can they? I'm not sure what, maybe there actually may have been an outlet in the floor or something and they did away with it. But anyway, it's, it is um, still a hot wire inside this junction box. So you just need a cover. They, did put, a, they put a wire in that on the black wire, so that was good at least. Yeah, I can put a cover right in there. I know there are a couple of but they're not even in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, now this is some, not all, this is some of the sewer lines. These are cast iron sewer lines. And what they did uh, was under this bathroom, they remodeled it. They used the black ADS plastic sewer lines, which are great. Mm -hmm. The cast iron does wear out after about 65 or 70 years, but there is a lot of it down. You can see the amount of rust and corrosion that's kind of starting to get into the pipes. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you probably have about 10 years left on these pipes to where you may have to completely have the sewer lines replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sewer lines only last about 65, maybe 70 years. This was built when? 60 something? 61. 61. So what are we got? Uh, 40 plus 17. Yeah, so we got uh, 57. About 57 years. So yeah, not bad, about 10 years left on the one foot. Uh, not real cheap. It's a few thousand dollars to have all your sewer lines. Yeah, I got a friend of yours. I help him do it sometimes. It is. Yeah. Expensive. Well, it's going to cost you probably about two or three thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Now, from what I can see, where it goes out to the street, that is still, from what I see where it goes out, it's still cast iron. I don't think they've changed that back to ABS plastic and new stuff. So, so what would happen? Um, it just start leaking? Eventually, it'll start leaking the rust all the way through the pipe. Um, now, this is totally up to you guys. It's kind of in that gray area. It's like if the house was a wee bit older, we're getting close to 60 years, I'd say, you might want to have one of the plumbers come out with those cameras. And they shove the camera down the line with a big huge screen yeah. and watch it and everything. They'll see if there's any roots or any problems in it. This is in that gray area. It's like it might be worth a hundred bucks to have it done. It might come back perfectly good. Nothing wrong with it at all. You got a great sewer pump. Oh, okay, it's worth a hundred bucks. Worth more peace of mind, I guess. On the other hand, um, I think I would do it on this one only because of the amount of rust I'm seeing I in think the cast iron. Do it too. And we got these big gigantic trees. Yeah. It's up to you. Where, where's the line go to? Where's it, where's it go? To? I think it goes out to the street. I know, but where, 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 does it go through the tree? or? Um, you know, where, I'm not sure. Yeah. I am not really sure. Three, right. three, six, yeah, at least 1,400 bucks. They run anywhere between 110 and Mike's about 150. So that's your ballpark. There's only two guys that I trust that both will camp it and do it right. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I would rather do it for peace of mind if you have the money. Otherwise, um, I hate to find out there were roots in it and there's a problem. Or one of the bell housings where they go together. Ooh. I haven't actually seen. Mike was doing one one time. I was watching the screen, and the bell housing was over here. The roots had shoved the three inch pipe over here, and you're looking for dirt there. Ooh. Yeah, and, and the whole front yard had been replaced that pipe. But anyway, um, kind of wouldn't mind knowing that prior to your. I don't know how many days you got so in there. Yeah. 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 17 yeah. days to yeah. make an inspection. Yeah. 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 You might want to have that plumber yeah. come out yeah. before that 17 days or whatever is up. Yeah. Um, in case there's a problem, you need to be like, so, what do I do? Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you need names, I can get you two, uh, two phone numbers um, to see about maybe having that camera. Um, oh, this is that wall that I was talking about. See all the moisture stains mm -hmm. running up and down? That's mm -hmm. that side wall of the garage. So it is soaking in there somehow. It didn't seal that garage. Well, how would you fix that? That should have been sealed before this uh, plywood siding went on. And now it's going to be kind of tough. I guess you could want to try to run it through the caulking along there. Mm -hmm. The caulking won't last. Even if you get the 40 or 50 years, when it's outside like that, you know, every three or four years, you're going to have to reseal it again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's not really the way it is. That wall. The okay. wall on the outside wall. That yeah. east outside wall, oh. yeah. Okay, let me double check inside the report here. I was a little surprised with the fact that I don't have any fence posts here. They needed all the metal posts on all three sides. Beautiful. Uh, this gate over here going out the back of the garage, yeah, it's right on the concrete if you really care. Yeah. A little bit of touch up on that guy. Uh, evidence of past the leak up under here, but I don't see any dry rot or any issues okay. with it under the patio cover. Exterior walls, the stucco, the guy did a great job on the stucco. Um, Just covered the hole. Yeah. And the roof? Um, roof is good? Roof is. They uh, recoded the entire roof over here on this side. What kind of roof is it? It is a rolled composition. Three feet wide, and they just roll it out. And uh, it just rolls. Oh, they tar all the edges where they overlap. Yeah. 
It's not composite. Well, it's not the tab composition. You know, like this long. You have three tabs. No, this is just the rollout stuff. Mm -hmm. but the reason why is this isn't a steep enough pitch for the tab composition. Uh, the brick chimney. Oh yeah, it can last uh, 25 years. Oh yeah. Uh, sprinklers, we talked about the valves leaking. Chimney though does have spark screen and rain cap on it. Gutters, downspouts were all replaced when they did the roof, so very good on that at least. So the chimney's all good for fire. Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've got one dinky little crack. It's up to you. If you look in the back wall, it took that big grate out that holds the wood. Yeah. About maybe 10 inches high, there's a little crack kind of running between the bricks. Okay. Yeah. I know you can buy a bag, a $2 bag of mortar. And just yeah. mix it with water to toothpaste thickness, and maybe okay. just use your thumb and mush a little bit in there, and just just make sure it's packed solid before you have too many fires. I would do that myself. Don't call it too high. Yeah, you're just going to take hundred fifty dollars for a little bit of mortar and crack. Yeah. yeah. No. And right now it's not uh, really due to be cleaned yet. A little bit of dirtiness on the sidewall, but that's it. It's not like a big build of soot or anything like that. So yeah, you got a couple of years for that. Little chimney cleaning. Does that have a gas line going to it at all? It does not. Now, that little box right here on the end is actually a blower. It shoots the air in and blows it back out the bottom so you can actually heat this room when you have the fire. Get uh -huh. something out of it rather than just watching the flame. Oh, yeah, it's not plugged in right now. It's behind that grate right there. You can plug it in. Yeah, and it blows out the bottom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably cook you out of here. I do. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, foundation underneath the house, I think I mentioned to you, is great. Um, let's see here. Um, there is a crawl hole right about over here that goes underneath the house. You can forget it. There's a pipe that's probably a 16 inch diameter pipe that is about 18 inches out from the footing. It runs the full length all the way down to that bedroom. I mean, literally, I don't think if you have to turn sideways and kind of pull yourself along to get. It, it's almost impossible going that one. So that's the reason why we put that bedroom. And this would be good to see if you look around that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Anchor bolts are all installed correctly down there for all those lovely wood clips we have. Um, my biggest thing is just uncertain about the drainage along that wall over there of the garage. I'm kind of concerned if there was any kind of a there's gravel. I don't know if there's French drain down underneath mm -hmm. or what. Yeah. Now, as far as the roof goes, only thing I'm going to mention on that is just regular maintenance advised. Only because um, where some of the roof jack, you know, the plumbing pipes, uh, go up, stick about 12 inches out of the roof. Mm -hmm. They did have to tar around those. And tar is only good for about five to 10 years and okay. start cracking in the sun. So you got to watch that. You may have to get a tube of Henry's, you can put a cotton gun with it, and put a little bead around there and take a stick and kind of smooth it a little bit. You see we didn't do that now yet or just not? Maybe don't. Here now it's perfect. Yeah, so I would say maybe another five years from now you might want to just double check it. That's up to you. You could have a roofer check it, but um, yeah. I'll just pop up there and walk and see if you need to crack them down. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. Um, okay, as far as the water lines, we talked about that uh, we have basically they've replaced all the galvanized to copper, except where it goes up through the walls. Copper's under the house, turns, goes up to the wall to go out to the valves underneath the sinks. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they did not do copper there. They kept that galvanized, but changed to copper under the house. So I have a funny feeling the galvanized probably, you know, with a saw before you cut through an old galvanized mm -hmm. pipe, you can't even get your finger inside it. That's so corroded inside. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling the pressure is growing big time in this house. They had that issue to um, But right now it's great, great pressure on everything. So nothing on that. Okay. What I do yeah. have though is in this hall bathroom. Yeah. On the faucet, I'm not sure why, if you take the hot handle and turn it off, you can hear the handle bang in the pipes. And ding, 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 all the time. Don't be master. I don't know why. They do make a back pressure type of a valve system that they can put underneath that sink that stops that from happening. I don't need a couple of It's just a sound, basically. It's basically a bang. It's not hurting. Every time you turn the hot valve off on that faucet, you hear a bang in the wall. It's not causing any damage. It normally doesn't know. Now, good reason why it might be doing it is I don't know if you've ever seen on some of the real water heaters. Up on the top of the water feeder where the coal line comes in, you see that little expansion tank. It's sort of like a irrigate looking tank on the top. It's an air bladder that okay. takes the hammer thing. I think I showed you the other. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, this little bladder. Well, when they come in, look at it and go, mm, we need to do that. Um, really, this is not going to solve the whole problem. Put one here, solves the whole house. Like, okay. One shot. They're about $75 for this little thing. It's not terribly expensive. Oh, remember, remember I showed that little blue tank on the other house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the top. That's what that is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's the only spot. I just found the master, which is kind of interesting. I figured I'd get it in all of them. Um, 
We talked about the rust and the cast iron already. The gas meter over on the west side was perfect. That water heater we were just looking at is only four years old. Nice. Wow. Um, let's see here. Furnace and air conditioner do look original. Is that a decent sized water heater from the house? Plenty. You should, yeah, 38 to 40 is what you normally get on a two bathroom house. If you had a three bath, it'd be a 50 bath. So how big is that? 38. Uh, 100,000 BTU furnace works great for a pretty yeah, good yeah, yeah. True, yeah. Um, two, yeah. I don't know if you saw the furnace just in the back of the garage in the closet there. That's where the heating okay. from the shooter is oh. at. Is it they're working all fine? Works fantastic, so does the AC. So I would have some mold once AC. a year and something on service. Keep it going. Uh, the the last one kind of takes care of yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, they've got a filter down here. It doesn't really have a rack to hold it, but this one's a washer. And it just sits right here, and it, okay. kind of, it just sucks oh, into the thing that comes on. But it's pretty dirty right now, okay. so we need to shoot some water through it to clean it. You can just hose it down? Yep. Oh, okay. okay. So, so this is for heat and cooling? Yep. That's your air intake. It's actually heat from the house. So it's a washable filter. Normally, there's some kind of a rack, though, a wire or something that holds it tight so it doesn't just fall over. Yeah, so it's missing that. It's not much there for the whole thing. It just leans up against that hole. It's not the best system in the world. But, um, and let's see here. So it just needs to be cleaned. Um, okay, the other thing is, and I'm not sure, I, I know they can't count it, um, your little pool house out there, that mm -hmm. other kind of a room off of that, mm -hmm. is not part of the square footage in this house. They're not allowed to make it part of the square footage in the house. The reason why there's no heat in the room. Appraiser cannot give value to any portion of the house that does not have heat. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. air conditioner, heat. So you would have to add the wall unit that's both heat and air conditioning into there before you'd ever be able to say, I actually have 1,800 square feet instead of 1,500 square feet. Right. But it has to have heat up there. Um, if that was going to be a place for a game room or something, kids mm -hmm. to play in or whatever, you might want to pop that air conditioner wall unit out and put in the heat. It may work. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's an electric heat, but okay. it will work and it does pass code. So if you ever wanted to add that square footage, you probably need to push it past the square too. Yeah. yeah. Feet, I'm sure. So I don't know. It's a part of that you may right. want to do it, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, just want you to know though, there's only air conditioning in that room out there. Okay. No heat at all. Now, as far as the air conditioner goes, perfect. I checked the gauge of wire, the fuses, and the breaker size, and they were all perfect, the right size and everything. Um, electrical, we already talked about seal those wires up at the masthead. What are the things we have? Multiple neutrals, we talked about an electrical panel, missing the handle tie on the 50 amp breaker, uh, the single 30 amp breaker being used. Oh, that's right, that was a single 30, not a single 50. But anyway, they just, you can't have a single 220 breaker being used. What are the good little things I have? Outlet not operational, bedroom two, five feet up. Oh. Somebody added an outlet about five feet high on this left bedroom as you walk in. Mm -hmm. Half of it's hot, the other half's dead. I have a feeling that outlet used to be somewhere else. You know, they break a tine on it, so one part is hot all the time. The other half of the outlet is switched. I think that's what they did. They had one, they put it in there, and they put mm -hmm. that one in there. So half of that outlet in the second bedroom, mm -hmm. about five feet high, on the right side of that outlet, it is dead. But the left side of it is hot. Is that Very dangerous? I'm not sure why they installed it unless it was for a wall TV. Yeah, that's probably what it was.
So I don't know why we don't have a smoke detector. We have them in the bedroom. Well, well, but pretty cheap. Yeah, work. absolutely. Okay. I mean, a lot of these things, well, you can almost do yourself, but you might want to yeah. a, a, a fishing lure or whoever. Yeah, not doing. Sorry, don't do um, everything else here, let's see. Outlet for the Northwest Sprinkler timer is not grounded. Oh, outside you can see two timers. Yeah. Over on this timer right here, it's plugged into an outlet in the wall. It's a three prong, and it's not really grounded. Yeah, because half of this house you'll find have the old two prong style. Because yeah. this house was built before '63. Yeah. '63 is when they started grounding out. Yeah. So, anyway, but that outlet out there under that one is not grounded. Also, um, it looks like somebody added the French door that went out of that hall bathroom. So the pool, somebody could go in and use the bathroom and go back out of there. Yeah. It probably was a window. Well, they added a door. The only problem is code says now that you have a door exit in the house, you must have a switch with an exterior light on it if you exit the door. Nobody put the light switch or light in. Yeah. Another code requirement, another electrician. That would cost hundreds of dollars because now he's got to fish wire in from underneath the house, drill holes, slide it up into the hole that cuts out of the drywall, then fish it up, put in an outside box. We're talking probably three, four hundred dollars just to put that one light in. Oh. But it is a code requirement. Um, and I'm also going to call on the switch here at the living room. I got about 800 bucks left over so far. Some okay. other stuff or whatever. Um, let's see here. Nice pile of dual pane windows. These are more guards. Really, really good. Do you know if the, the pest, do they find much stuff? Do they no, not much at all. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's great. Um, one thing I would like to find out about is the last seller. Did he put these in and do any stuff with the house? I don't even know if this was a flip or no, a not, or just different. the guy just did a nice job on it. I would like to know what year you were put in. The reason why, out of 2008, these windows have a transferable warranty. They will fog up, the wheels break, they don't slide, they cannot work. Well, that's right now. Oh. If it was before 08, they're not. As soon as the house sells, there is no warranty. So they're good, they're good windows, windows, huh? They're very good. They're, they're actually built over Rancho Cordova, is their plan. Oh. Um, so anyway, but then I have dumb things. Like, let me show you real quick. I'm in the uh, master bathroom. Code requires that you have to have a dog pan. Now, oddly enough, it looks like um, they put this laminate flooring down. I don't know about the bedroom where the carpet is, but underneath this is the original oak, solid oak wood flooring. Ooh. It's underneath this. Why would they, do, why why would they, they just didn't sand it, stain it, and refinish it? I have no clue. They said they put this stuff down on top of it. Okay, it must be a desert for dog. You just have that down. I just don't know how much of it. You look right here. There's your oak right there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's your old point right down there. Hmm. I have so no I idea why they covered up and put the hammer in instead. Wow. Um, and I don't know how far it goes. I don't know if it continues in. Some people have to pull the carpet and pad up in one of the corners and see if the oak's there. But I just wanted to let you know it's under this lamp. Wow. Probably not in the kitchen, though. Now, I was back in one of those closets that I had to crawl. They had the old 12 by 12 lick and stick kind of linoleum squares. We used to use like for yeah. a sewing room or something like that. That's what was in those bedrooms um, back there instead of uh, wood. Okay, um, anything else here? No, floor covers look great. Fireplace looks good. Uh, I've got a lot of the fan lights that are not working because I don't have the remote controls for them. I have this one here, bedroom two and bedroom three. None of those fans work. Um, and a couple of the remotes that were there, the light doesn't come on, so I think the batteries are dead. So you may just want to ask, you know, like, when I do my walkthrough at the end before we close escrow, can you have all the remotes sitting out for me, new batteries, so I can at least go light, fan, yeah. and see them all work? Oh, that's bad. Because right now, none of the bedrooms work. Um, I don't even know if they're going to operate. Yeah. That's why I record it. Okay. Uh, carbon monoxide is installed, however, there's no smoke detector at the hall. This uh, house actually requires the hall before the bedrooms, actually. Uh, laundry in here was great. Now the thing is there's no gas behind the dryer, but 
there's a gas pipe right next to it to make fun for all of you. So if you want to do a gas flight, you can just tee off the way. Cool. Oh, if it's 220 right yeah. now, that's great. If it ever dies, you decide you want to upgrade to a gas, which is really nice, I'm going to half the time. You do oh, a whole really? load of jeans in 25 minutes instead of Oh, wow. That's half the time of gas. That's why it's cheaper to run it. But anyway, you could tap off the gas line right there. Uh, of course, there is no attic. Uh, out in the garage, moisture stains on that wall we talked about, common cracks, uh, not the fire rated door. That was it out there. The opener, though, safety features, auto reverse, and everything worked fantastic on that. And then our kitchen, some of the cabin door hinges are loose. You open these guys up, there's some filter screws in here, and we've been tightening down quite a few of them, they're just loose. Uh, low pressure with the spray wand. Uh, we've got good pressure there, but this thing just kind of goes out. Uh, and that should splash. It doesn't look like that. Down with pressure. But there's seven pounds of water pressure at the house, so I'm not sure why the spray wand's is there, is there a water regulator? And there if ring? there's one, it would have to be in line to the spray wand. In, in line, but uh, yeah. And let's see here, what else? Anything else? Oh, the air gap is loose if you were to hear. They didn't tighten the net up underneath the granite on this guy, so it's just it's completely loose. There's a nut that comes up to the bottom, and that just needs to be tightened up. Otherwise, water, if it gets back there, water's going to go down into the counter. Mm -hmm. And then last is the bathrooms. Uh, both toilets were perfect, no leaks, no cracks, and they're not loose. I uh, do have some old moisture stains below the hall bathroom sink, but they're old. Um, looks like something leaked at one time, but it's fine now. Is it kind of hard to tell sometimes if the toilets are leaking when there's caulking at the bottom of the toilet and stuff? Like sometimes no, I run my finger all the way around and see if I can get a little bit, but yeah. you're right. Yeah. It's kind of hard because it's caulking. Then you'll see it under the house, though. Yeah, oh, that's uh, true. So that's the other good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have also the track is loose at the bottom drawer of this hall vanity in there. In that bathroom, when you slide it out, the whole thing falls on the floor. So I took the thing off, got it off the thing, and the whole track that goes back in the bar across the holes of the track and the screws go down, all ripped out. So that's going to have to all be re-screwed. Somebody have to get in with a cordless drill with a bit on it and zip, yeah. zip, zip some new screws into it. Um, and that was it. Bathtub, showers, perfect. No grout needed. Glass yeah. doors are perfect. And no backwards plumbing. Pots on the left, holes on the right. Yeah. I get it all the time with some guys that don't. Well, after all, it's also pretty good. Pretty and overall, it's, I'd say it's about 90%. There's cool. like 10% of some items that need to be and fixed. Most electrical. So, most mm -hmm. electrical. Yeah. It's, I, honestly, I think it's stuff that he touched. Yeah. He did himself. If he just were left alone, I would think it probably would have been. You do have, of course, two ovens, uh, top and bottom one. Oh. So, uh, very nice. Yeah. Well, I don't know if yeah. here. The bottom one is convection. It's got the fan in the back. So if you huh. had like three Papa Murphy's pizza and you want them all oh. done in 20 minutes, you put all three pizzas <laughs> in there and they're done in 20 minutes. Because it circulates the air instead yeah. of making just the hot bottom and then it cooks too much on the bottom one. Yeah. That or is so nice. you have, uh, three sheets of uh, chocolate chip cookies. You can do that in there and it's great. Now the upper oven is not, does not have the fan. This is where you probably put your smaller stuff like a single casserole or something like that. Hey, you don't have to worry about your oven no more where the things are all bent and trying to pans like oh, yeah, like this. I see those every <laughs> once in a while. So overall, very, very good. Of course the yeah. hood, everything's working fantastic in here. Um, but like I said, some of these darn, um, oh, just, all of them are loose. Yeah, so some of these go through with a built yeah. speed driver. Uh, get them, and as you can see, it's hit. It's because they're, they're loose. So you've got to take that up tight and then tighten it, and tighten it the other way, and then it won't get them. Okay. I, can have that. I mean, it's Saturday honeydew list items, to be honest. I like these drawers know. that you can't slam on. Yeah, they got the easy close. I love it. Anything else, though, that I didn't we're touch good? on that you guys were thinking about, that you were wondering about? I think we're good. I know yeah, that's okay. a whole bunch in just a few minutes. But I got it recorded, no biggie. So. The only thing I'm kind of worried too is about that pool thing out there. We gotta get that looked at. The guy saying say? that the guy that I just cleaned up.